What is going on, guys? Sky Walker here, and welcome to the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. This weekend starts off the march for eight teams to get to Super Bowl 53. The AFC wildcard is in the rearview mirror, and I'm sure me and the Fed are going to be talking about some of those games on Saturday. Today, I want to talk about the Indianapolis Colts. I want to talk about the team that utterly just dominated the AFC South champions. Hopefully your guys' team is still doing well if they're in the playoffs. Unfortunately for the Fed, his team is out going down to the Chargers. And unfortunately for my father, who is a Bears fan, got to watch Cody Parkey, just like he did so many times here in Cleveland, hit it off the left upright. I thought the Bears for sure were going to run away with that game. I didn't think the Eagles had any form of a chance against the Bears. And the Bears defense showed up. The offense didn't so much show up. And then, of course, the kicker didn't show up at the end. Just a recipe for disaster for Chicago as their season ends on a complete heartbreak. Good luck to Chicago next year. Good luck to the Ravens next year. Me and the Fed, I'm sure, will be talking about those games, like I said, on Saturday when we get back together and preview the divisional round. But I'm going to be talking about the Texans before we move on to the Colts and Chiefs. The Colts, right from the get-go, dominated this game. First possession, they took like seven or eight minutes off the clock, went down, scored a touchdown. Held the Texans, made them go three and out. Got the ball right back, went down and scored another touchdown. Took a 14-0 lead at the end of the first quarter in utter domination fashion. Second quarter, the Texans get blanked again as the Colts tack on another touchdown to make it 21 0 at the half. Nobody scored in the third quarter. The Colts got blanked again in the fourth, whereas the Texans finally put something on the board as Deshaun Watson gets in the end zone. But, guys, the stats do get inflated in the fourth quarter as the Colts started to play keep away, started to run the ball a little bit more, keep, Texan, keep Houston off the field, and Deshaun Watson just started eating apart that soft zone which I hate. I hate prevent defense. I think prevent defense prevents you from winning, just like my father, my grandfather always said, and I believe that to be true. And that, is, that was really the only time the Texans scored is when the Colts start, decided to go soft and got out of their normal defense. But I can understand it. You, you want to get away with this game. You already have it basically handled. You just want to get out, no injuries, get moving forward. Unfortunately, our strong safety did injure himself and is not looking good as he had a calf injury, and he's probably going to be out on Saturday against the Chiefs. But here we go. Andrew Luck, 19 for 32, 222 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. His QBR out of 100 was an 80. Very good job, Andrew Luck. And he's proving once again that he's an elite quarterback in this league. Uh, people were, including myself, were wondering if Andrew Luck was ever going to get back to the way he was. He is slowly but surely silencing his doubters, silencing the critics, proving once again he is a top quarterback in this league, and any time number 12 is under center, the Colts always have a shot to win the game. They always have a shot to beat some of the upper echelon teams, upper echelon defenses like the Texans had. They have one of the best defenses in the league, and Andrew Luck just eviscerated them in the first half. Very well, very good job, job well done, number 12. Probably... Next to Andrew Luck on the offensive side, other than the offensive line, which once again, great job. Great job. They all were healthy for the first time in a few weeks. Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly lead the mean charge on that offensive line, along with Braden Smith at the right tackle, Anthony Costanza with the left tackle. Just form a great, great group. And Marcus Hunt over there on the right guard. Just very good job, guys. Very, very, very good job. The offensive line is proving that they very well could be the best offensive line in the league. And Marlon Mack, I was talking all day Saturday. I wanted Le'Veon Bell on, on the Colts so bad. This guy is proving that we may not need to go get Le'Veon Bell. As, as I said on Saturday, when the offensive line is complete, he averages 5.2 yards a carry. Today, he did even, or on Saturday, he did even better. 6.2 yards a carry. 24 carries, 148 yards, and a rushing touchdown. Zach Pascal had a 14-yard run on the wide receiver reverse, which was fantastic. Andrew Luck scrambled a few times, got 29 yards. It was just an overall good day by the running game. 
and the Colts again are the only team in the NFL to not allow a 100-yard rusher. This is impressive here. The Texans' run game, Deshaun Watson was their leading rusher with 76 yards. He And really, it was on scrambles. Those were the best runs. But here's some of the running backs' stat line if you want to see how impressive the Colts' run defense was on Saturday. Lamar Miller, 5 carries, 18 yards. Alfred Blue, 2 carries, 8 yards. Dante Foreman, 1 carry, 3 yards. So outside of Deshaun Watson's running for 76, the Colts held the Texans' running backs to 29 yards. Absolutely impressive. Fantastic. The turnover battle was tied. I want to talk about this clown. And you're going to get the reference here in a minute. T.Y. Hilton decides to come out and say NRG Stadium is his second home. And it it really kind of is. Anytime he plays the Texans, he just destroys them down there in Houston. Jonathan Joseph decided to take that the wrong way. He's the Houston cornerback, the Houston Texans cornerback, and said that that statement was for clowns. So what does T.Y. Hilton do? He decides to, the day before the game, has, has some of the Colts crew go uh, go to Party City for him, for him and pick up a clown mask, which he said he is ultimately retiring at the end of the at the end of this game. But he wears the clown mask in the stadium and just terrorizes the Texans defense again. Five receptions for 85 yards. Just did what T.Y. Hilton does. And the only reason he didn't go for over 100 was really in the second half. Like I said before, the Colts were really just trying to play keep away. Um, although I will give the Texans defense a lot of credit. They stepped up because the third quarter, the Colts were looking like they were trying to score another touchdown and make it 28 nothing at that time. And the Texans really stepped up, played good defense, made some big plays when they needed to, made some stops on third down, made the Colts punt it away. But uh, all in all, very well, very well job by T.Y. Hilton. Good job. Dontrell Emmon is becoming one of the best possession receivers the Colts have. Went perfect today, four for four. Uh, well, went perfect on Saturday. Four catches out of the four targets, 53 yards and had a touchdown. Chester Rogers had a, also had a big day with four catches for 46 yards. The hidden gem that Chris Ballard signed in the offseason, Eric Ebron, three catches for 26 yards and a touchdown. He was being misused out there in Detroit, wasn't quite living up to the expectations. you got to use Eric Ebron properly because he's not going to be in every down, every down tight end. He's just not. He's not going to be the best blocker. He's not going to be a speedster. You got to put him one on one with a linebacker. You got to get him the size. You got to get him one on one with a corner. Give him the size. Give him the right route, and just put him in the position that best fits his his game. Best fits his style. And when you need a first down, it's a third and short, and you just need a quick tight end cross route or a out route by a tight end. Eric Ebron's your guy. He's bigger. He's stronger than. Uh, most guys that are going to be defending him, and he's able to just jump up and go down and grab the ball. And same with same way in the red zone, he can just go up and get it, bring it down. That's why he's had 13 touchdowns, and this was his 14th touchdown on the year in a Colts uniform. Great, great career year. Darius Leonard on the defensive side of the ball, a Pro Bowl snub. And even though I don't watch the Pro Bowl, I probably haven't watched the Pro Bowl in a decade. It's it's not even really it's the Pro Bowl. I don't really watch most of the All Star games. I think the NBA All-Star Game is boring. I don't watch the MLB All-Star Game. I like to watch the festivities with it. For the MLB, I like to watch the Home Run Derby. I like to watch the softball game. I like to watch the Legends game, all, all the side stuff with it. I just really can't get into the actual game itself because the game really doesn't mean a whole lot. NBA, it's just a bunch of guys who don't play defense and just like to score. And For a pickup game, sure, it's fun to watch. Not really my cup of tea, but I like to watch the Rising Stars Challenge. I like to watch the three-point shootout. I like to watch the Slam Dunk Contest. I like to watch the Skills Challenge. I like to watch all that, but the the actual All-Star game, not really a big fan. Anyway, back on topic. Darius Leonard should have been a Pro Bowl, should have been a Pro Bowl, or should have had that item as part of his resume as he looks to have a great career. He finished with 13 tackles with a pass deflection. Five of his tackles were solo. Clayton Gathers, great game coming back off of injury. Had nine tackles. Five of them were solo. Also had a pass deflection. Kenny Moore with six tackles. And the pick down in the Colts' side of the on the ball when the Texans were driving, getting that interception, 
getting the Colts right, getting the Colts the ball right back. Very good job. Adam Vinatieri was perfect on the day with his extra points, and Rigoberto Sanchez had four great punts, uh, put him inside the twenty twice. So very good job. Moving on to the Texans, Deshaun Watson, twenty nine of forty nine for only two hundred thirty five yards, touchdown and a pick, was sacked three times his QBR. Remember, it's out of 100. His was 23.4. Not a very good day for Deshaun Watson as he looked like he wasn't ready to quite make that jump yet. And I thought he was. I thought playing in the college football playoff, playing in that big-time atmosphere, he'd be able to do something. The Colts' defense just locked him down, shut him down. One of my keys for the Colts' victory was for DeAndre Hopkins to was to hold DeAndre Hopkins under 100 yards. Did it even better than that. They held him under 50 as he had five catches for 37 yards. The bright shining star for the Texans offense and really the only shining star was Kiki Kuti coming back from injury. He had 11 catches for 110 yards and got their only touchdown. Great young player. Great young stud for them. He's going to be a good ball player in the future. The time of possession was just about the same, but again, you got to remember, really kind of revved up there in the second half. The Colts did ultimately edge out having the ball for 31 minutes compared to the Texans, 29. But now, the wild card is in the rear view mirror. We're going to be taking a look at the Kansas City Chiefs, the best offense the Colts have seen all year long. However, for the Chiefs, this could also be one of the best defenses they've seen all year long. We're going to take a look at the Chiefs schedule here. Because this is this team that the Chiefs are about to play. I'm going to take a drink here, so give me one second. Excuse me for that. Needed some Dr. Pepper. All right. The Chargers haven't seen this type of team yet. The Colts are a team right now that are scorching red hot, and no team wants to play them. They play very balanced on the offensive side. They play very balanced and aggressive at the same time on the defensive side of the ball. Balanced to where they blitz when they feel like they have an opening, but... Anytime they have that opening, they're going to take it and they're going to hit you. They're going to hit you hard, hit you every time, hit you right in the mouth. Remember, Matt Everflus, as the Colts defensive uh, defensive coordinator, came right out of Dallas. Dallas defense this year, also very good. Also hits you very, very hard. He brought that style over to Indy. The Texans defense is just about the same. They're, the Colts and the, and the Cowboys defense are really, really similar on how they play. So, Getting right into the Chiefs' schedule. They played the Chargers twice. Split it. Okay? Played good teams. The Chargers then went to, or the Chiefs then went to play the Steelers. Early on in the year when the Steelers were intact, the Chiefs beat them. Beat the Niners. Beat the Broncos. Beat the Jaguars. Lost to the Patriots by three. Gave up 43 points to the Patriots. When the Chiefs play a good offense, they give up a lot of points. Except for the Chargers. But remember, the Chargers were very early. They put up 28. The Steelers put up 37. The Niners only put up 27. The Broncos only put up 23. They held the Jaguars in check. But the Jaguars don't have a good offense. But now is when you start to play some pretty decent offenses. The Patriots scored 43 on them. Then they played the Bengals. We know they kind of stink. They played the Broncos. Eh. They played the, the Cleveland Browns. Browns actually had played a pretty good game up to this point. This is right when they started to make that turnaround, getting rid of Hugh Jackson, embracing Greg Williams as the head coach in that mentality. The Browns did only manage to put up 21 points, though, in Cleveland. Then they go down. the Chiefs go down and beat the Cardinals. Then they had that shootout 51-54 at the Rams, where the Rams ultimately won, and putting up 54 points is no joke. But then you get into December after their bye week. The Raiders put up 33 on them in Oakland. The Raiders scored 33 points and put a scare into this Chiefs team. The Ravens held the Chiefs to 27 and put up 24 with an offense that can't throw. The Chargers then go play the Chiefs and put up 29. The Seahawks dropped 38, but then the Chiefs get that payback from the Raiders and hold the Raiders at three points. So the Chiefs have really had an up and down season for the most part of how their scoring is. They've had a great season overall. Don't misread me. They're a fantastic team. They won 12 games and only lost four. They're a great team. Great football team. However, I'm not sure if the Chiefs are ready for this Colts team. The Colts are 
kind of surging here where the Chiefs were kind of starting to struggle as they lost two of their last three games. They lost to the Chargers, lost to the Chiefs, and beat the hapless Raiders right at the end, okay? So they kind of started to fall off there towards the end. Does that mean the Chiefs are a bad team? No, no. The Chiefs are still one of the best teams in the NFL with the best offense in the NFL, an elite offense, elite. This game, though, is going to be a completely different animal for both teams. The Chiefs have not seen a team like the Colts. They have not seen a team this red hot like the Colts. The Colts, on the other hand, haven't seen this type of offense all year long. This is going to be probably, in my opinion, the best game out of all of them. Whereas, I don't know, you got some good matchups. The Cowboys and Saints is going to be a good one, too. And then the the, the Eagles game is going to be good. Oh, there's going to be so many, so many good games coming around here for, this, for the divisional round. This is really kind of, this is the best time for the NFL. This is going to be the most competitive playoff weekend potentially we've ever seen i'm sorry the the cowboys play the rams cowboys play the rams eagles play the saints so the cowboys and rams is going to be a great great football game i'm i'm gonna get into this on saturday i'm gonna pick the cowboys to win that game and i'm gonna give some explanation on saturday to make sure you tune in that game chargers patriots i'm gonna take the chargers to also upset the patriots it's gonna be (laughs) <laughs> I think the Chargers are going to win that one. Again, I'll explain my reasoning on Saturday. Saints-Eagles, I think the Saints win. But <laughs> Foles magic, man, just never seems to die. So it's very possible the Eagles can steal that one. And the Saints are favored by 9.5. I don't know how you can lay 9.5 against Foles magic. But, boy, uh, that, that game kind of scares me. I'm picking the Saints, but... It, Nick Foles, you can never count out Nick Foles. But Colts and Chiefs, Chiefs are favored by five and a half. Five and a half they're favored by. I don't know how you can do that. I, I really don't. Because this team, the Colts team is just playing so well right now. They're playing really, really good football. And the Chiefs are, like I said, kind of limped into the playoffs just towards the end. Not all season. Remember, Chiefs are an elite team. 12 and 4, fantastic. Very, very good. But they did struggle those last three. And then they had the bye week. Maybe that bye week is perfect for them as they need that refresher. And the Chiefs are 7-1 at home. The Colts are 4-4 away. This game is going to be a must-see game. I mean, all four of these games are going to be must-see. This is probably the most excited I've been for the playoffs, just as quality of games-wise, in a long time. I mean, these games, and really any four of them, can go either way, and nobody would be surprised at the outcome. These are really some great, great football games. I hope you take some time to appreciate this year's playoff. Even if your team's not in it. Even if the Colts weren't in it this year, it's if there was a team like the Colts, they would be, man, it would just be every game is going to be right there at the end. Really, the only blowout of the week was the Colts and Texans. I mean, the Seahawks gave the Cowboys a run, and I thought the Seahawks would win. And they did, and the Cowboys showed that they have a great defense, and Zeke just dominated uh, the Seahawks, and the Seahawks really couldn't get the running game going. And I thought the Chargers would run away with Baltimore, and Baltimore stuck right back in at the end. I mean, it was at the end, the ball, and the Ravens had a chance. The Ravens had the ball at the end with a minute left. They fought all the way back. They, they couldn't get it done, but, man, it made it interesting for the end of the game. And, of course, the slobber knocker between the Bears and the and the Eagles right towards the end. But, man, all these games are going to be good. I'm going to take the Colts with the upset over Kansas City. You can call me a homer. That's okay. But with the Colts riding this hot, remember they've won now 10 of their last 11 games. Their only loss coming with some stupid game against Jacksonville where they lost 6 to nothing. In just a fluky, horribly played game by both teams. The Colts played worse. This Colts team is very good. They did win 10 games this year. They're no slouch. The Colts can take on anybody. With 12 under center, he's been in a lot of playoff games. Pat Mahomes, this is his first one as, as a starter. First one playing in it. He was on the bench last year. I'm going to take the experience. I'm going to take the better defense. The Chiefs have the better offense. Defense wins championships here in the postseason. 
It's proved it time and time again. The Colts had the better defense that day. Guess what? They won. The, e the Eagles and Bears both played great. Both played great at the end. But the Eagles' special teams defense blocked or got a hand on it on that Bears' last-second field goal. Cowboys won the game. Defense. Chargers won the game. Defense. Defense wins championships here. Defense wins championships in the NFL postseason. I'm taking the better defense. I'm taking the more experienced quarterback. You can argue about who's better. I would think Andrew Luck's probably the more ready quarterback, like the most, probably the better quarterback right now. But Mahomes, you cannot take away what Mahomes season-wise was. That was unbelievable. If he extends it out for another year or two, Mahomes will be the better quarterback. There's no doubt about it because Mahomes, if he can throw 50 touchdowns a year, that's insane. That's just crazy. But overall, I'm going to take Andrew Luck over Pat Mahomes. I'm going to take the Colts defense over the Chiefs de over the Chiefs defense. I would take the Chiefs offense over the Colts offense. And the special teams are going to be about the same. Really, with the rule changes, the special teams really have been negated for the most part. So it's really hard to evaluate which one's better. But with all the checks, I'm going to take the Colts with the upset on a last-second win, like a 34-28 where the Colts have – where it's tied at 28 and the Colts just go down and win the game. Or maybe even a 31-28 where they go down and Adam Vinatieri kicks a game winner one more time in Arrowhead. And the Chiefs are 0-5 against the Colts in the playoffs. Could that be their first win today or this weekend? Or do they go to 0-6 against the Colts in the playoffs? Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if I'm crazy. Let me know if I'm being too much of a homer. Make sure you guys check out the website, and I'll talk to you guys later. Skywalker signing off. Peace.